Hey, this is Joe at Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Ego Compressor from Wampler. All right, so this is the Wampler Ego Compressor. Very popular compressor, definitely one of the most popular boutique uh, compressors on the market. I believe this is also the first Wampler pedal I've done, which is surprising. Wampler has a huge share of the boutique market, I would say, maybe even moving in out of boutique um, with their widespread availability at local guitar stores. I know Guitar Center stocks new ones that I've seen, Sam Ash, I'm sure some other stores as well. The Ego Compressor specifically, probably most famously used by Corey Wong of Wolfpack and his own solo stuff and I think the something flyers. Suffice to say there's a lot of love out there for the Ego Compressor. It is a pretty classic design. It's based on the original MXR Dynacomp or the Ross Compressor which was sort of a upgraded version of the Dynacomp. But the major departure is the inclusion of the blind control which is an op amp to bring in a clean signal from your guitar mixed in with the compressed signal. This helps you stray away from that sort of effect sound of a compression where you just get that full squashed kind of chicken picking sound and you can blend back in some of your full dynamic range guitar signal into the compressed sound. It lets the compressor go from an effect on its own versus something that's always on and just giving your guitar signal more body and more presence because you don't have a bunch of soft stuff getting lost and then a bunch of loud stuff that's getting squashed by the front of house or whatever uh, because you're, you're too loud. This, as you can see, is an early version. I believe this is from 2011. This would have been right when Wampler is moving away from their previous company name, which was Indie Guitarist. Side note, if you're ever on the forums and you see someone posting it to Indie Guitarist, that is Brian Wampler. For a while, he was making pedals under that name, Indie Guitarist, and then this must have been pretty soon after he switched over to calling his company Wampler Pedals. So this would have been one of the earlier Ego compressors for sure. As far as externals, we have a 125B size enclosure. It's got a nice clear powder coat, kind of sparkly. Yeah, it's blue sparkle powder coat or, or some kind of lacquer. It might not be powder coat. The effects are a clear label here. It's actually a sticker that has the controls. So blend and volume are here on the left, tone control and then attack sustain on the right. We've got an LED right there in the middle, five millimeter LED. Standard latching foot switch. Input and output jacks are side mounted, which is kind of a sin on a 125B. We've definitely moved over to standardizing around top mounted jacks for 125B, but this was 20, 20 or 13 years ago. That's forgivable, I would say. Nothing on the back, nothing on the front, the bottom, just a standard logo, wangle pedals out and in, and a standard external nut DC jack here makes it easier to disassemble and repair. That's it for the externals. Let's go ahead and crack it open. All right, so here's the inside of the Ego Compressor from Wampler. Here is the info sticker. It says model Ego Compressor, serial number 4495 and April 20th, 2010. So actually this is from 420, 2010, which was not, uh, I didn't buy it for that, but that's a funny thing, 420, 2010. And it's signed Justin Singer, who must have been an employee at the time. Here's our PCB, you can see it's all through hole components. I My guess is probably now that the Ego Compressor is surface mount, just ease of build and at the quantities that Wampler is putting on now my guess is probably surface mount with pick and place machines is what they're going with but this was 2010 so this was 24 years ago now all through whole components as you can see so right at the heart of the effect we have what is the heart of the Dynacomp and and subsequent uh copy or not copy but uh, ba effects based on that compressor based on that which is a OTA transconductance amplifier this one specifically the CA 3080e made by Harris the uh, CA 3080 is as far as I know, the first commercially available uh, operational transconductance amplifier is what OTA is. It was originally designed by RCA. A good guess to know it's RCA is anytime you see that CA prefix, that's RCA, vintage RCA at least. So CA3080 was initially made by RCA and then was bought or licensed by Intersil slash Harris. It was a joint venture thing. They are discontinued as far as I know. I believe there is a company still making them called Alpha in Latvia. I think you can still get CA3080s or at least you know, eight pin dip ICs, they can drop into a circuit that needs a, uh, an OTA like that, but it's not, I don't know if it's like the same tooling or whatever um, that RCA and Harris use. So caveat mTOR, I guess. Up in the corner here, you have another eight pin dip package. This is a op amp, a TLO 72 right there, Texas Instruments. Handful of transistors around here. These are usually input and output buffers, just BJT buffers. As far as part numbers, they look to all be, 5089s, 2N5089s. 
from maybe Motorola. I can't see a manufacturer mark. The red capacitors are the Panasonic ECQV or something like that. Film caps, the resistors are all metal film, quarter watts. Electrolytics are Nichicon electrolytics. Quarter inch jacks look like the Switchcraft 112BX style. Uh, the part number might be different if it's not stereo. They both are, are they? No, so this is a mono jack for the output, which is what you'd expect, because that is not going to be turning on and off the battery snap, whereas the input jack is a stereo jack, but they both look like the Switchcraft plastic enclosed style. The foot switch is a standard blue three pull double throw foot switch. The enclosure you can see here, it's got a piece of foam for your 9-volt battery, and then the lid has a matching piece of foam. Keeps the battery from rattling, rattling around inside. There does appear to be a resistor here that's shrink-wrapped into the power line coming from the DC jack. So the 9 volts coming in, it's going through this resistor and then going into the board. Presumably this was like a, a mistake. It was left out of the PCB. It'd be a whole lot easier than having to do this where they're actually like splicing in a resistor to this wire. Uh, it's probably like a low value, like 100 ohm resistor or so uses filtering. We can see the 9 battery snap is down here. It's actually strain relieved by this little uh, zip tie tied around the some of the wires coming off the switch. Ideally, it would be better to tie the zip tie off on something physical, like maybe one of the lugs for the quarter inch jack, something like that. I can see why they didn't because there isn't really room to do it, uh, but Theoretically, all it's all it's uh, being relieved by is the solder joints for these wires. So it's probably better than having nothing, but it'd be ideal to tie it to something mechanical, physical, rather than solder joints of other wires. If you are interested in knowing more about the design for the compressor here, I'll actually put a link in the description to the Electro Smash article for the Dynacomp. Like I said, it is a Dynacomp-based compression circuit. It has the added blend control, which is Ryan's own adaptation on the Dynacomp. But at its core, the compression, the variable gain amplifier, if you wish to be pedantic, that is utilizing that OTA, it is based on the Dynacomp. Electrosmass has a much better article, explains it way better than that could. So I'll put a link to that in the description, go check that out. Other than that, that is the internals of the Wampler Ego compressor. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, that was a teardown of the Ego compressor from Wampler. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you want to see on an upcoming teardown episode, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.